Why don't we all admit it? Admit what? We're going to Lauderdale for one reason. To meet boys. <laughs> so now it can be told. I want to make movies. I wanted to just make records and travel all over the world and make records in foreign languages for people. But uh, a man came to see me in California when I was appearing at uh, the Crescendo Club and said to me, Connie, uh, my name is Joe Pasternak and I would like you to be in a movie called Where the Boys Are. So I said, I don't want to do any movies, Mr. Pasternak. I appreciate you know, your coming here and, and your time, but I don't want to do any movies. He said, you have a comedic talent like Judy Garland, and I wanted to, to develop that. But he persisted and he persisted and he persisted, and then I, later on, on I found out that he had discovered Elizabeth Taylor, Diana Durbin, Catherine Grayson, Jane Powell. He did Love Me or Leave Me with Doris Day, and I said, this man's got a few credits to his name. Showbiz. <sighs> Must be a great life. Boy. I was in showbiz myself once. Mr. Pasternak did a talent scout search throughout the United States for talent for his picture. So he picked Paul Apprentice right out of Northwestern University. I was very lucky. I was very fortunate to be in the movies. I was not from Hollywood. I wasn't familiar with any of those kinds of things. I didn't have a show business background. I had just the girl next door image, you know, being from San Antonio and Houston. It was a job, my first job, my first you know, into the world thing. So that was a, it was a great thing for me. Five feet, ten and a half. Without heels? Without stockings. <whistles> that's a lot of girls, Tuggle. I was tall, five ten, but that's nothing today. All the kids are much, much taller. But Jim was another tall contract player. And since we were the tallest contract players, we were put in uh, four pictures, one after the other. And it was fine with us. And I think we were smart enough to know we were employed. But once in a while, if people would ask us if we were married, we thought, well, maybe it is time to <laughs> go off on our own. But we had a wonderful working relationship and a friendship, too. The city of Fort Lauderdale is once again under fire from the north. We've survived it before, and I reckon we're going to survive it again. It was filmed in Fort Lauderdale. What was neat for me was that when I was in college, all of my friends went down to Fort Lauderdale, and I stayed at the school during the spring vacation. So I never had seen what it was like. But lo and behold, if I did get in the movies in the first place, I went with Fort Lauderdale. So I thought that was cool. First time I went to visit it, they showed me a copy of the book. And I took a trip down to Fort Lauderdale. And it, there was this serene, quiet, residential, peaceful town of sun, sand, and surf, you know, called Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It was like there were boys ha growing on palm trees, and I got so excited about it, I couldn't wait to tell the rest of the world about it, too, so I did. What I was amazed at at that time was when we finished filming there, we came back to the set at MGM, and there was the exact same thing, the makeup and the set and the props and all that of the movies. It was wonderful. So why do we get down to the giant jackpot issue? Like, should a girl, or should she not, under any circumstances, play house before marriage? It was one of the very first movies to suggest that you could have sex before marriage. And I think the scenes between George Hamilton and Dolores Hart were those that brought that subject up. And it revealed that maybe that was what was going on in colleges, you know, whereas it, it's more open now. It wasn't at all at that time. Well, Man Hungry was not me at that time. I was too busy making records. Where the boys are. The uh, choosing of the title of the, or the song for the picture was entirely up to me because it, contractually I could record whatever songs I wanted. But now um, there was a picture involved. Uh, so Joe Pasternak said to me, Connie, I have 
the top writers in Hollywood, Sammy Kahn, Jimmy Van Heusen, Paul Francis Webster, they're all writing on consignment, which they never do, the title for this movie. So you'll have a choice of at least 10 or 12 songs. And I said, oh no, Mr. P, I said, that, that's not gonna happen that way. So he said, why not? I said, because all the songs that are my hits are written by, by my two boyfriends in, in Brooklyn. One is Howie Greenfield, but one is Neil Sedaka. And they write all my hits. So he said, yeah, but they, they're kids. These, these people we're talking about are tops in the field. I said, yeah, but would you give them a chance to write it? Give them enough time? He said, okay, you have a week. So I got Howie and Neil on the phone and told them, I said, you may have your first motion picture song uh, if you come up with a, t a song that's good for a movie called Where the Boys Are. So within a week, they had written two versions of Where the Boys Are. One of them we loved and one of them we hated. So uh, I played them the Where the Boys Are and, and passed next to Connie Connella. He said, you were right. He said, this Where the Boys Are is going to be the title picture. And I said, oh no. Oh, Mr. Basternak, please, why, oh no. And I called up Howie and Neil on the phone and I said, I've got good news and I got bad news. I said, the good news is you got the title song. The bad news, it's the song we hate. Look, I want a frank statement of fact. Do you see any improvement in me at all? Angie, you look wonderful. You look great. Straight arrow? Sure. You'll sweep him off his feet. When the movie was shown at um, Radio City Music Hall, it broke all records there. And it was the Christmas and New Year's, and then the spring break. During spring break, 300,000 kids descended upon Fort Lauderdale. There was no place for them to sleep. They were sleeping on the, on the beach. To film on location and to have a camper where people knock on your door and want an autograph, even though I hadn't done anything before, want you to sign the book, waving at you as you go in to shoot the scene, those were all fantastic things. Not what I had associated with what acting was going to be. It was so uh, indicative of what our lives were back then. Our lives were so much more innocent and simpler. And I think sometimes you do look back at yourself and your world and think, what a wonderful, innocent world. And you appreciate yourself for being that. Boy.